Hello and welcome to Bloomberg Quint. I have with me Sunil Mittal right here in the middle of the Congress Center in the main area. Mr. Mittal, thank you very much. Uh, the activity here, in a sense, reflects what's been going on in the telecom sector back home. Uh, everything seems to be free. I think we'll come to a point where uh, many of you might be even profit free given the way <laughs> things are going. But that's on a lighter note, on a more serious note, really. How damaging has this been? You know, one anticipated that uh, any new operator with that kind of uh, investment and scale has to do something disruptive to get customers attention to get customers to use the network and let me tell you in our industry is very very hard to come from behind and get attention of the customers you've seen this in Sri Lanka we've seen this in Bangladesh you can do what you want you have to be really disruptive so we expected it to be you know very cheap but maybe not entirely free. We expected voice to be thrown in free. That was being talked about for a long period of time. And you can sample it for 30, 60 days, but to do it for seven months free. That's what I mean. Uh, we feel that uh, clearly they have not got the attention they wanted. They could not stabilize the network probably. And it takes time. It's not just because they can't do it. No one, when it launches your network, it takes some time to stabilize. And they wanted to be near perfect. And therefore, I think they were saying, why take the flak by charging and make it free? As you know, we have protested against that. Yes, I Nothing agree. much has happened so far. Let's see where it goes. But uh, we'll deal with it. I mean, the revenue table of this industry will take a hit. It's already taking a hit. Yeah, so they take a hit because in the end, free is free. Yes. So it takes, while the overall data uh, utilization voice has gone up, the revenues go down. Okay, I'm going to go through some of your numbers in Q2, not because I expect you to respond to me with some specific number for Q3 or anything like that, but just to give a sense of how difficult this business has become at this point in time. Blended ARPU was down at 188 rupees, lowest in the last 16 quarters. Voice ARPU has been declining, again lowest ARPU of 132 in uh, Q2. Data ARPU flat, churn ratio was at about 3.7, marginally higher than the previous year. I'm, you know, I'm just wondering, where does this end? Because there's now talk that Reliance Geo might in fact extend their free period. Um, you've complained to the authorities, if I can put it that way. Like you said in your words, nothing much has been done. Uh, how much more damaging will this be to your bottom line? Well, we are, good news is we are holding up. Uh, amongst the uh, players in the market other than Geo, uh, as you know, we, our revenue market share is at a lifetime high. 33%. 33.2% yeah. maybe. We are gaining market share from the table which is dropping, we are gaining. Uh, the small players, which we call the value players, are giving up. They are not investing. Uh, networks are in a bad shape. Uh, Videocon is out. They sold the Spectrum. Augier is sold, gone. MTS is gone. So a lot of players, which were, you know, you remember 2008 was disruptive. Yes. Docomo is struggling. Aircel, Arcom is struggling. Telenor, we don't know where it's going to yeah. go and end up. So you are looking at that 15-20% pool getting very badly disruptive. So there's some gains coming through as well. We believe, I, we will know the numbers when they come out, that we may be doing better in terms of our holding uh, ourselves against uh, the geo slot compared to what I an idea. Okay. So in overall sense, while things are, you know, in a bit of a disruption, hmm. Airtel with the superior network and having put two, uh, 4G networks two years ahead of time, lot of spectrum pool, great management, good brand, is holding better. But if I say, are we going to start looking at growths, that's gone. Yeah, you know, maybe holding on to market share, but the point is, is it profitable market share? And the second thing is, if they extend their free period, will you feel compelled to have to extend some of the free services that you all have all been prompted yeah, I mean, to offer? My right? view is, if you want to take uh, everybody to the bottom, I mean, people have been responding, Voda has done it, after we did it, yeah. Idea has done it, everybody is trying to protect their customer base. Yeah. In the end, it is nobody's case that Geo will not be a, one of the big operators. Equally, it's nobody's case that they will be the only operator. So my view is this will settle down. Let's see how long uh, this whole pressure on the industry lasts. It's also good for us to take away a lot of operating costs away. There was a still in this industry uh, fat sitting there, waste sitting there. This is time to be much more efficient. So if they extend their free period, it would be obvious for me to assume that you all will extend your free periods as well. We are not having any free periods. You all had some free, sort of, let, let me put it this way. Some freebies, let me call it that. Yeah, so you respond to the market needs. Yeah, so you will continue to, to do that. To hold on to your right? ground, you have to keep on doing it, which hurts your revenue growth, which yeah. hurts your market. So you'll continue to do that, right? Yeah, yeah. At no point are you going to stop and turn around and say, I'll give up market share for profitability. Yeah, but you must recognize this is only in the 4G space. The entire 2G and 3G space, there is no change. It's only those people who are buying 4G phones. The competition is therefore in a limited space. But then what explains your voice are poo declining? Because, because of the free, right? You're, you're so I'm saying voice. you're losing whether it's in 3G or 2G or 4G. 
the point is at the end of the day it's money going out of your pocket sir true true but i mean yeah. there is still a large section where these rates don't apply i'm saying there is a lot of um, uh, still 2g 3g business going on so they have a very strong how long will your margins hold up you no know, margins will never hold up if uh, you are bound to give low rates but you will see as the uh, you know market start to use more data which they are more videos more internet you want to get some volume back Okay, you're confident of continuing to increase your market share. Is that has that been the experience in the quarter that just finished as well? I mean, we so are you will see the 33.2. I don't know what the right number is because the TRI. But it's on the upward. We but believe because I don't know about what idea. We believe yeah. you've done better than that. Yeah. Okay. The other thing you said, you know, uh, there were two things you said in both in your responses that struck me. One is you said the authorities are not doing much about it, and I want to talk to you about that a little bit in some degree of regulatory capture if you feel that way. And the second was you said a lot of the smaller players will fall out, and we'll talk about cons consolidation. But first, I think the regulatory response to geos free, 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 free. Do you think that's been fair to the industry? Well, obviously, if we are sitting today in TV set against uh, inaction, we are obviously saying what has happened is not right. That, that's a statement we have already made through a public uh, action by going to TV set. Okay, and you are hoping for quick justice because TV set could take weeks and months. TV set generally has been very uh, you know, efficient and prompt, but still people have to file submissions, affidavits have to be given, counter arguments. It takes time. What does it say of us that? What, 15 years after the last bruising battle in telecom, we're still complaining about the same things. Regulatory capture, uh, lack of a level playing field, favoritism of some sorts, um, regulations that can't seem to keep up with, you know, how the market is evolving. Well, all I would say is, regulator needs to be conscious of supporting new players. Equally, they need to see the industry at large does not suffer. It's my, in my own opinion, this would have not passed in Europe or US. No question, a pricing like this would have been allowed. It's That's a, very clear. It's a double whammy. It would have been within days that this would have. There would have been a regulatory action stopping something like this. It's a double whammy for you because not only have they not taken any action against this extended free period, but they've in fact, you know, recommended a penalty on three of you or three of you players uh, for not providing interconnect services as per the license agreement. Well, on, on, on that again, I think they've been very unfair. You ask for interconnect, just suddenly one day you say, announce, I'm going to start my commercial services. And then you ask for interconnect. Within a period of four months, they have more interconnect points than Vodafone or IDEA have in 22 years. Uh, so it's very unfair on this industry to have be giving so much of points of interconnect, moving uh, a, you know, whatever you wanted to move on heaven and earth. We have 90 days period from your request for me to give you POI. We do it in nine days, nine hours at a time. And yet you are faced with penalty. I think it's unfair. What does it say about our country, Ms. Mittal? You know, you're a die-hard India optimist. I have never seen you or heard you say anything ever that sounds pessimistic. But really, we're back to what, the late 90s? This must be a huge sense of deja vu for you. No, I'll tell you, uh, if you look at uh, the different organs of the government, one thing I feel very comfortable about today is at the highest level of the government, I don't think so there is any indication, and I'm saying this is all seriousness, any indication of any slant or tilt in any side. I'm very convinced about that. I sleep well that this government is not going to start playing favoritism towards anybody. But then there's different players or actors in the whole space. Some parts we feel do get uh, influenced by the arguments or whatever else by the other side. But there are counterpoints. TRA is recommended, DOT has put up a committee. Uh, they are seeking opinions, discussions are going on. What we understand is DOT is questioning why this penalty. It will go back to TRAI, TRAI will have to respond to that. There are courts there. Okay. Good news is... I already feel like I am in the 90s now. <laughs> I don't know how you are not Some things that the, uh, even the top leadership can't change overnight, I guess. Overnight? It has been how many years? <laughs> <laughs> you are being really charitable. The second point you brought up was consolidation. I have two or three direct questions to ask you in this. I think you have professed earlier that you expect this market to be about four or five pan-India players, right? Um, we are almost at that number? We are that number, finally. Yeah. I have been saying it for too long and I have been wrong. <laughs> but uh, one effect of GOA is the small guys are gone. Yeah. They have no business case. Yeah, cool. So it looks like some of the middling guys also might be looking to hold hands. Uh, there's been this constant rumor about Idea and Vodafone. 
Um, we know for a fact that it's a perfect was match. If you, if you look at it, the match is not bad. But you know, I can't sit in the minds of Vittorio or Kumar. It is a perfect match. It is. It is. Uh, explain to me why you think so. The strengths and weaknesses match very well. Uh, rural, urban, uh, spectrum, uh, portfolio. It's a good match. So you're actually saying that if they did merge, it would be it would make for a good business case. I support it. You support it. Yeah. Okay, well, I, I don't know if they are going to or not, but no, I do I know, know I that. I, from an outside side, I support it. I support consolidation always in the industry, which are the best examples in the world, US, mm. with three operators. Wherever you see two or three operators with large markets, they've been able to be profitable, they've been able to make large investments, and they've been able to give a lot of revenue to the government. It's actually a perfect combination, and therefore I feel India has had these 12 operators, and earlier the government saying, we are crying uh, wolf there, the spectrum is not an issue. Now you hear themselves saying spectrum was an issue. We have given a lot of spectrum, we'll give more spectrum. And spectrum issues thankfully are behind us. But the fact is when you create 12 operators to mm -hmm. say we want to break a cartel, we want to break the back of the existing guys, that is a wrong argument. And that destroyed this industry for a period of time. You have had billions and billions of dollars written off by foreign investors. It's not good for India. Yeah, well. I, yeah, I agree. So consolidation is the order of the day. You're in favor of a, or you see wisdom in an idea, Vodafone merger. That is a good match. Good match. Sorry, let me say that. Uh, are you in the market for something? Because there is this rumor about <laughs> you looking at Telenor. But Telenor is not a merger of a big company or something. Oh, of course yeah. it's not. I wasn't at all suggesting it was anywhere close to your size. So I was just big, asking no, if you are in con, negotiation. We've done Augier, we've done Aircel all the um, uh, LTE spectrum. So we do things. We are always in the market. Everybody talks to me. All of them fight in the market, but they are personally very close friends of mine, the whole telecom industry. So I talk to them, I advise them. And uh, despite being a competitor, they'll come to me, what should we do? Close down, shut down, sell customers, sell spectrum. So, so what have you advised, Eleanor? I think it's time to go. Time to go? I think so. So will that mean that you might be one of the people that they might sell their business to? You know, I'm friends of Telenor globally. In India, we have competed uh, head on and uh, they have actually created a lot of difficulties in six or seven circles with a value play. But uh, I think uh, it's in the interest of India also to give a good exit to companies like Telenor rather than wasting all the efforts. Okay. So I would say uh, we look at everything, but I think they are talking to many people, not just us. So I don't know what the outcome will be. Okay, but in the interest, in, in, in national interest, you might look to buy Telenor. Yeah, it? it's not only national interest. I think we have to also see it suits us in terms of pricing, value and everything. But I actually feel on a larger, I mean, I'm a veteran in this industry. It's been 22, 23 years. I feel that this industry should not be uh, scaring the investors away. It should not leave bad taste in their mouth. People are going to write off a lot of money. But can we, can we give them solutions which are easy? Okay, so I'm just confirming you are in conversation with Telenor, there is a deal potentially to be had and it's up to them whether they're going to do it with you. Yeah, so there's a deal potentially to be had, there will be some deal in terms of Telenor and I don't know whether it will be us. I get that, okay. But can you give me a sense of what the valuations etc? No, I, I, I don't think so valuation Okay, I tried my luck, you can't no, stop. No, honestly, I, I don't even know. You don't even know? I don't know. Okay. Mm. Okay. Um, the third thing I wanted to talk about India was whether in the last three months you've seen any impact because of demonetization. A large portion of your revenue comes from prepaid, right? Yeah, there was an yeah. impact. I mean, yeah. as Could you help industry, us quantify roughly what it was? I think 8 to 10%. 8 to 10%? Yeah. So, sorry, explain. 8 to 10% of revenue was impacted by this? Yes. Or top ups which come through uh, the prepaid. Wow, so this, uh, again, I'm not asking you for what this quarter will result in, but it's going to be a tough no, one. So you started from, let's say, 9th or 10th of uh, November. November. Yeah. Then for a period of time, there was an impact of that. Then they allowed the 500 rupee note to be used. Yes. It sort of came back. So I don't know the number of the quarter, what it looked like, but there was an impact of people not having enough money to top up. Right. And by the way, there was a free service on the other side. So it kind of becomes even more difficult. A free service that doesn't work because you all don't give it interconnectivity. No, no, no that's, not, that's not fair at all. <laughs> I mean, I'm telling you, we've given them more interconnectivity. I know, I know. Please, and I, I've I'm told Mukesh as well, this is a non-issue. I mean, POIs can never be used by any operator as a weapon to block anybody. We will never do it. Okay. We have never done it. Excepting the time frame given to us was so short. And the tsunami of traffic that was flowing through, you gave them interconnect by the evening, they were full. 
Okay. Um, uh, you see stress on financials across the telecom sector because of demonetization, because of this price yes. war. Is it scary stress? Stress that might in fact... You know, you, do I look scared? Do I look stressed? Well, you never have, but then exactly. you've, you've fought and won and sometimes lost big battles. So, let's see how this plays out. My own view is, uh, end of the tunnel, there's going to be more light than we think. I told you, uh, our unbeatable optimist. Um, Africa didn't quite turn out the way you expected it, it to. Yeah. Yes. You've sold a few of those businesses. Two countries have been sold. Yes. Are you planning to sell more? Few countries have to be rationalized, yes. That could mean sale, that could mean merger. Few countries need fix. So effectively, may I say or may I conclude that Africa was not as successful an experiment that you thought it would be? Yeah, we can conclude that. Yeah, and that at some point in time in the near future, you might altogether exit the continent? No, I mean that... that You'd have marginal business. Because if you look at it, we've got 3.3, 3.4 billion dollars in sales, 800 million is a bidder. We've taken a billion out of sale of two countries, two billion out of towers, three billion has already come back. Some more rationalization may be possible, but are we quitting the place? No. Up to how much will that rationalization be? Do you have a monetary figure in mind saying this is how much more I need to bring back from that Africa business? Not really, because I tell you a lot of Another people billion saying, or so? yeah, billion, two billion will happen at some stage. But how long, where will it take, what rationalization takes place? Will it be merger uh, between the two sides and we just hold the shares? If you look at Bangladesh, we have merged with uh, Robbie and we hold 25% stake in a very nice uh, number two player. I don't know whether cash will come out or not, hmm. but some rationalization will certainly take place. In the time period of a year or two? In one year. Okay. Uh, has the Africa experiment meant that you might not have any further global expansion plans that for the foreseeable future you will be focused only on India? <laughs> right now. 100%. Well, that's just easy, <laughs> easy to conclude. Okay. You're also looking to sell, uh, you know, I think some stake in Bharti Infratel? No. We have received offers. We don't know whether we want to sell. We when want will to sell you find minority. Out? We want to sell control. There's a committee which has been formed. They have received offers, I believe. Committee uh, is in, in your company. There's been a committee. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, okay. yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, yeah. But it's a committee of directors. I am not <laughs> a part of that. Okay. Because actually, I I want to be neutral on this one. I I have a some days feeling that we should divest. Some days I feel we should hold. So I think let the committee go through the entire proposition of what's good and make a recommendation. Then some of us will sit down and decide. Okay. By what time period will you have decided? I think soon because you know you can't have an uncertainty because there was a declaration we have put up a committee. We believe some uh, offers are likely to be made in the coming days and then the committee will decide. I would say one month. Okay. I, since I don't know whether it's going to be a minority sale, a strategic sale, a majority sale, I can't tell what the rationale is. Are you doing this to delever a little bit? Are you yeah, doing yeah, this yeah. only if, that? If you sell, only you need to delever and get okay. some more, I would say, space on our main side. Okay, so how much are you looking to deleverage that's up to? That, that, Again, that, that, that's, not that's not decided. But you must have some sort of, sort of, you know, goal points in in mind, right? Saying, this is this is the monetary cushion I need to fight Geo. If Geo is going to be free for the next three to six months, therefore, this is the money I need no, look, to Manika, unlock from other end, assets. You know, in the end, we are well funded. For we spent 10, 12 thousand crores of capex. That's what we need. Last year was a big year. We spent 15 thousand crores because there was a lot of 4G lot of 3G you know, coverage. This year will be probably 11, 12,000 crores. Yeah, it's all done. I mean, 11, 12,000 crores is what we spend. We have $5 billion in the bidda. We you know, pay for our capex, we pay for our taxes, we pay for our interest and all that. From that point of view, and at 2.6, 2.65 times bidda multiple of debt, we really don't need to do anything. So strategically, you have to see, should we hold towers for some more time? We are going to roll out a lot of network. Should we keep it in our charge? Or it doesn't matter. In Africa, we sold towers. We can also lose control in India. It is not core to this industry, but it's strategic to this industry. There's the difference between core and strategic. Okay. So, you won't tell me... Okay, you, you so will if know If you need a couple of I billion will, yeah. dollars, we can sell 10% of the company, we can sell 15% of the company. There are many ways to... But you haven't decided as yet how much you need or how you want to go about it. I mean, right? there's, let me put it, there's no burning platform. Cool. So if you don't like any of the offers, you may choose yes. not to do anything at yes. this point in time as well. Okay, fine. So uh, then one last question. I know that you've already spoken extensively about your payments bank business and uh, you know, you've come in with an aggressive interest rate. Uh, I was talking to uh, you know, Vijay Shekhar Sharma the other day. He's going to be the next payments bank to launch Paytm and he said he's not going to fight the interest rate battle. He's going to look at the services battle. How do you see this space evolving? It's a new space. It's the opportunity to craft something new. You know, yeah, Vijay is uh, doing a great job. I mean, he's a pioneering uh, person in this area. And uh, my view is, 
He doesn't need to fight on the interest rate. He's in the urban areas. We are in the rural areas. It matters in the rural area. And we're talking about 500 rupees, 2,000 rupees. It matters to them, the interest rates. And we are going from rural to suburban to urban. We're not going heavy urban to rural. I mean, our whole uh, uh, work is in financial inclusion area. His work is in the payment area. So okay. there's a difference. But he will be good. I mean, there will be two, three, four successful banks. We hope Airtel to be one of those. All right, we'll leave it there. I've already taken lots of your time. Thank, Thank you, you very much, Mr. Mithal. And I hope you enjoy the rest of your stay here in Dallas. Thank you. Thank you. you too.